some potential championship winners. When we look back at the season, Mr. Florio, who do you think we're going to see on a bunch of championship rosters? I think as long as he stays healthy, Saquon Barkley is going to win a lot of people fantasy championships this year. Brian Dable, I know he abandoned the run when he had Josh Allen the last couple of years, but prior to that, his offense has finished top six in rushing attempts in five of his six years as a coach, and he's always been heavily utilized in the passing game, Saquon that is, and I think he once again should, given the Giants receivers around him, plus they have a revamped O-line there, and he's fully healthy, so get excited for league-winning Saquon this year. I am very much on board with the saquon this year, so uh, in the meantime, I'm staying running back. I'm going to go Joe Mixon, who doesn't necessarily excel in any one area, but is very good at a lot of things. I mean, he's got more receiving upside than Jonathan Taylor or Dalvin Cook. He's got more rushing upside than Austin Eckler or Alvin Kamara. He's the lead running back with very little competition in a high-powered offense. Plus, you can get him fairly late in round one, still come back around and get yourself a top-tier wide receiver in round two. You can double up, more bang for your buck there. Yeah, I like another running back who'll be going towards the end of the first round, and I'm talking about Aaron Jones. That When you look at this team now, without Devontae Adams, the best option for Aaron Rodgers is going to be Aaron Jones, who has scored double-digit touchdowns in three consecutive seasons, as you see right there. The only other running back that can make that claim is Derrick Henry. And so when I look at it, this team, the way it's constructed now with Alan Lazard and a bunch of rookies, Aaron Jones is going to end up leading this team in targets. That is going to make him invaluable. He should be much higher on your draft boards unless you're one of those DePaulo brothers. Then don't, don't, don't listen to me right now. Yeah, twins, stay away from Rick's favorite fantasy players uh, this season. I am looking at Nick Chubb because so many guys are jumping up in the rankings this year. What about somebody who's been incredibly consistent even with the offense starting half of Baker Mayfield's body last year, he had 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns, one yard a game higher than he did two years ago. He's been so consistent, and at a time when he's the RB12, RB13 off the board, if he could get up there and get 15, 17, 18 touchdowns and be the RB1, that's the type of situation where you win a league getting a guy overperforming his position like that. All running backs so far, and I'm going to go with the guy that the haters have called a running back before Get playing out of here, quarterback. Haters. You spot. called them that earlier. <laughs> they don't need to know that. Jalen Hurts, <laughs> he led all quarterbacks in rushing yards and touchdowns last season, and because of that, he was putting up top five quarterback numbers until a late season ankle injury. Plus, the weapons around him are so great with A.J. Brown, second-year Devonta Smith, and it is his second full year as a starter. So what already we know he could do with his legs, plus improved passing, I think it leads to a clear path for him being the QB1 this year. Love Devonta Smith there, too. Oh, Devontae Smith, nice option. I'm going another wide receiver here, though, and I'm going to go with Michael Pittman, who last year really had a breakout year, the 25% target share. The Colts didn't do a whole lot to really upgrade their wide receiver room, but they did upgrade at quarterback, going from Carson Wentz to Matt Ryan, which, by the way, a good move by Michael Pittman to not give up 11 to Carson Wentz. He just held on to that. That <laughs> yeah. was smart look at, by him. Look at this pass. <laughs> right? I mean, look, throw? right now, you're getting Michael Pittman drafted as sort of a fringe wide receiver one, maybe a high-end wide receiver two, but he has way more upside than that. I look for him to have a huge year this year. What a baller move that was, keeping number 11. Like, <laughs> no, you're not going to be here next year. I'm going to keep number 11 when you're playing somewhere else. One of the positions I think we should look at is a potential league-winning one, the tight end position. Now, I'm going to go with Dalton Schultz, who has been pretty remarkable for the Dallas Cowboys over the last couple of years. You know, one of the things that we're really looking at with all the departures from the Cowboys, especially in the pass-catching realm, is that they're going to need somebody to step up. C.D. Lamb's obviously a very good option, but I think Dalton Schultz is going to be such a great value. His ADP is currently that in the sixth round. He's going well behind guys like Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, and Kyle Pitts, but I think that Dalton Schultz this season is going to end up outscoring Travis Kelsey. I'll just say it. There it is. There it is. Aaron, make a graphic of it and tweet it. <laughs> I'll stand by it. <laughs> Big words from Adam Rank, who also said that CD is a great option. Yeah. So great, in fact, that I will take him here. We'll right, go Cowboy, <laughs> Cowboy to finish up potential Fantasy League uh, winners because, as Rank said, the volume has got to go somewhere with the big departures like Amari and Seth Wilson, the injuries as well. So I, I think CD could have that kind of bump that propels him into stardom. 
when he had six or more targets in 2021, he had almost 20 points a game in those games. I think Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore will have some serious problems if CD doesn't get six targets getting off the bus. Yeah. Like Sean Payton is, is waiting <laughs> in the wings. Sean Payton will do it. It's like the Undertaker. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs>